you know that a big part of getting cavities has to do with acid? Acid in your mouth, acid in your food, acid in what you drink. But here's the crazy thing. It may be more dangerous to drink less of some of these acidic drinks than it is to drink more. Let me tell you why. It's all about your mouth and the way your mouth naturally cleans itself. Saliva is your natural cleaner. It lubricates your mouth, it helps everything to move around, but it also helps everything to clear. Now, saliva is an amazing liquid. It actually helps to bring your mouth acidity back to what we call neutral. That's where we want it to be, neutral. And the more time we give your saliva to do that between eating and drinking, the better job it's going to do. Now let's talk about what acid does and what really leads to a cavity. A cavity is when something dissolves or pulls the minerals out of the tooth. Your body may need those minerals elsewhere. That's one of the reasons nutrition has such an important part to play in cavities. But acid is really the biggest component. If something acidic hits your tooth, it will literally dissolve the minerals out of the tooth. A lot of people have done an experiment where they'll pour one of these uh, soft drinks, these colas, onto the terminals on their battery if they have a lot of corrosion. And you can go and watch videos about this. What happens? This acid or acidic liquid literally dissolves the minerals on that battery terminal. You've probably also seen experiments where people will put an extracted tooth or a quarter or an egg into some of these acidic drinks and you see what happens. They literally pull the minerals out of whatever is in them. That's what an acid does. It doesn't matter what kind of an acid we're talking about. An acid will always do that. So as it pulls the minerals out, it leaves holes in the tooth. The tooth becomes more porous. And if the tooth is more porous, bacteria can crawl into those holes. Those bacteria, they love sugar. And when they eat sugar, they actually excrete or poop out basically more acid. That acid then gets deeper into the tooth, dissolves more minerals, the hole gets deeper and the bacteria crawl in further. So the more acid there is, the chance is greater for the bacteria to get into the tooth and to get deeper and deeper and deeper, creating a cavity. The goal is let's get your mouth so it's not acidic. And if you're going to drink or eat something acidic, we want it to clear quickly. So here's some tricks of the trade that you really need to understand. Let's say that you love tea and you're going to drink five bottles of tea a day. That's a lot of tea. That might be a problem, but let's say that's what you love to do. Well, what you want to do is drink it all and then give your mouth a chance to come back to neutral acidity or to a neutral balance. If you slowly drink it over time, maybe you just drink one bottle of this a day, but you sip on it all day long. That's actually worse for your teeth because every time you put it in your mouth, the pH, what's called the pH, drops, meaning it's more acidic and the minerals are being pulled from your teeth. If you never give your mouth a chance to recover from that acid attack, then it's constantly pulling minerals. So it's actually better to just guzzle this than to slowly sip on it over a long period of time. I have a lot of patients who will say things like, oh, I just love my Coke, my Diet Coke, but I only drink one can a day and it lasts me all day. That's the worst thing you could do because you're constantly feeding a little bit of acid, lowering the pH, more acidic, never allowing the saliva to bring it back up to neutral pH. So it's better to drink it and be done with it and then rinse your mouth, get it out of your mouth. Here's something else you need to know. The very worst time to brush your teeth is after drinking one of these acidic drinks. Why? We've just said, that that acid makes your tooth softer in essence. It makes the minerals more vulnerable to being pulled out. So if you've drunk something very acidic and then you go to brush your teeth, you're going to just by the act of brushing now pull more of those minerals out because they're soft and they're vulnerable. So you should not be brushing right after drinking an acidic drink. These are some things people don't understand. You can drink something that is not acidic, which the opposite of acidic is alkaline. So milk or dairy products are very alkaline. You can drink that and it will help to balance the pH faster. But honestly, your body will do the job on its own if you just give it enough time. This goes for snacking too. If you're constantly popping something in your mouth all day long, 
The problem is, is that your mouth has to drop. The pH has to, you know, get a little lower, more acidic to be able to digest that food and then clear the food. Again, making the teeth more vulnerable. So you need to have breaks between drinks, between eating, where your mouth can get back to neutral pH. How long of a break? About 30 minutes is how long it takes for that mouth. 30 minutes to an hour for your mouth to really neutralize and get back where it needs to go. So constant snacking, constant sipping is really bad for your teeth. That's not the only thing that goes into this. What you're snacking and what you're sipping on makes a big difference too. So what we've done is we've tested a whole bunch of common drinks right here and I wanna show you what their pH level is. Now remember we talked about pH, what is pH really? It is the acid or alkaline level in this liquid. So it tells us how acidic it is. Remember, the more acidic it is, the more it's going to pull minerals out of the tooth and the more potential, the more risk you have for getting cavities. So let's see what the pH is of all of these liquids. All right, we're gonna use some pH strips to test the acidity of all of these liquids and it doesn't take very long it basically says you know just a couple of seconds so we're going to put one in right now and then we're going to go back and look at all of them so let's just drop one in all of these <laughs> let's look at our results today so we're going to measure against the scale right here Let's look at kombucha. Everybody says kombucha is very good for us, right? Let's see where it falls on an acidity scale. It is at a three. Okay, what are we looking for? Neutral pH is seven. That means it's not acidic, it's not alkaline, it's neither. It's just right in the middle where we wanna be. No minerals are getting pulled from the teeth. The lower it is, the more acidic it is. Battery acid is around a two. Kombucha is a three. We think we're doing such a great job drinking kombucha. It might be great for your gut, all those probiotics, but if you're sipping this all day long, you're dissolving your teeth. Gatorade, everybody says, oh, we gotta have Gatorade after working out, right? Where does it fall? It's the same, look at this. Gatorade is, it's about a three and a half. So maybe it's a little bit better than kombucha. Gatorade is a three and a half. Very, very acidic, just a little bit over battery acid. Okay, this is an energy drink. Let's see where this one falls. The same, about a four three and a half, four. So kombucha and an energy drink from a tooth standpoint are the same from your for your teeth. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, another energy drink. Where do we fall? This one is about a four. This one's actually a little bit better. If you're going to pick from an acidity standpoint, that one's right at a four. T. Okay, we're moving up the scale just a little here. This one is a five. Still acidic, but not as bad as the others down on this end. Okay, the infamous colas. This is actually the diet version. This is the regular version. We wanted to compare both. That's a four. So diet Coke is four. Remember, we're looking for a seven. Regular Coke is a three. So regular Coke is even more acidic than the diet version. Diet Dr. Pepper, about a three and a half. Regular Dr. Pepper, about a three and a half. Those two are the same. Both very acidic. Smart water. All right, we're finally getting some numbers over here. What well, we would hope to see is seven. This is a seven. Smart water has fallen about in between a five and a six. What? That's actually an acidic water right there. Kirkland water. So many people use Kirkland water. It's a six. Kirkland water is less acidic. From an acidity standpoint, have a coffee. Coffee stained my test stick. Coffee is about a five. So coffee is acidic as well. So what in the world do you do? First of all, you need to understand that these are all in part going to make your teeth more vulnerable to cavities. So you have to give your saliva in your mouth time to recover. You have to give them a break from this. You have to give them a break from foods as well. One of the things that a lot of people do is they put lemon juice in their water. That's great. Lemon juice is going to hit at about a three, even a little lower than some of these. Very, very acidic. It will also dissolve your teeth. 
you have to give yourself a break. You have to have a drink that doesn't have any acid in it, or you just have to have long enough in between those drinks. The same thing with food. There's a lot of acidic foods, correct? Things like tomatoes and pineapple, orange juice, all of those things, you can just taste the acidity in them. Those all will lower the pH in your mouth as well. You can't just be sipping or snacking constantly all day long, even with non-acidic foods, because it does lower the pH. So what do you do about it? Well, there's a few things. Number one is you need to fill your teeth up with minerals daily, because daily, every single time we eat, we're going to be pulling minerals out, which means we need to put them back. What is the mineral that a tooth is made of? Hydroxyapatite. So you need to be putting hydroxyapatite back into your teeth every single day. The two ways to do this is the hydroxyapatite tooth powder or toothpaste, using it twice a day, and then a hydroxyapatite mouthwash. So Living Well with Dr. Michelle has both of those things. That just needs to become your routine. Just keep adding minerals back because you're gonna be losing minerals on a daily basis. The other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you're absorbing minerals properly from your food. What do you need to do that? You need to make sure that your stomach has enough acidity. Now, this is the crazy part. Where do you want things to be acidic? Down here in your stomach. Remember, your stomach is where you pull minerals out of the food. So we don't wanna pull minerals out of the teeth here. We don't want acid here. We want it down here so we can pull the minerals out and utilize them. So take the baking soda test. Make sure that your stomach is acidic enough to use those minerals to utilize the minerals out of your food. So get your gut working correctly. Also adding vitamin D and K and making sure that you are getting proper minerals. So feeding yourself minerals and adding the vitamin D3 and K2, which help you to absorb the minerals. It's all possible. You don't have to get cavities and you still can eat and drink foods, but it's very important that you understand what you're doing. Frequency matters. Frequency and amount matter. Give your mouth time to neutralize itself between drinks, between bites. If you're gonna have a can of Coke, drink it all and be done. If you're gonna have a cup of coffee, drink it all and be done. Do not nurse it all day long because you're constantly dropping the pH and making your teeth vulnerable to cavities. There is so much that can be done from a nutrition standpoint, from a dietary standpoint, when you just understand how acid works, how teeth work, how minerals work, and you can be cavity free when you just follow these few simple steps and rules. Now, as we learned, saliva is so important for neutralizing the mouth. So what happens if you don't have enough saliva? There's two reasons that people will have dry mouth. Well, three reasons, but two that are persistent. Number one is if they're taking medication that lead to dry mouth. And there are a lot of heart medications and things that will do that. Number two is sometimes just with age, saliva amount decreases. I have a patient who he had never really had a cavity. He was very meticulous about his tooth care, everything. And so we would see him every six months just because he wanted to make sure he was on top of things. But honestly, we didn't talk about much when he would come. We would clean his teeth and high five and you know send him on his way, catch up on stories, and that was about it. Well, he came after six months. Again, he was very, very diligent on coming routinely. And he had seven cavities and they were all along the gum line. And I said, whoa, what is going on? You never have cavities. What's happening? A couple of these cavities were so deep, they were actually threatening to kill the tooth even. They were getting close to the nerve. And he said, I, I don't know. And so we started thinking through what had happened, what had changed. He went on a medication for high blood pressure and it had led to him having a dry mouth. What does that do? The saliva wasn't there to clear the food to clear the drink and to neutralize the acid in the mouth. And so the acid had sat on his teeth 24 seven and he had rapidly progressing tooth decay. What did he do? What did we do about this? We did all the recommendations that we give every day here at Total Care Dental. We talk about adding hydroxyapatite. We talk about doing it with a tooth powder as well as a mouthwash. Particularly for him, the mouthwash was important because it was all along the gum line plaque will adhere along the gum line if there's no saliva to wash it off. And so a mouthwash will get into all those nooks and crannies and remineralize the teeth where that's sitting. We also talked about what some other options were uh, for high blood pressure. And so he visited with a functional medicine practitioner, got off that medication and used some natural alternatives to that medication. 
it's a big deal if you have a dry mouth. It's a very big deal and you need to be very meticulous about making sure you're getting minerals on the outside and minerals on the inside if you do. So these are all very important things to understand about saliva and about tooth decay. Hopefully you've realized and recognized the importance of minerals for tooth health and the importance of what you eat, how much you eat, and when you eat it to strengthening your teeth and not getting tooth decay. All of these things really make sense when you just get down to the science of it. So thank you for learning about the science with me here. If you want more information, please check out my Healthy Mouth for Healthy You book. It has more information. We've tested a whole bunch of other liquids as well. You can see the pH levels of all of them, and it gives you instructions on how to keep your teeth healthy. So request our Healthy Mouth Healthy You guide. If you want more information, we'll send you all of this about how you keep your teeth healthy and still eat and drink the things that you want, maybe making some better choices somewhere here and there, but really understanding how this works. Mm -hmm.